This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. It's the holiday season again. Get out the holly boughs and mistletoe, put up the tree, and light a candle in every window so that our families and friends know how much we miss them. I'll have some bonus material after the end credits roll, but for now, it's time for a Roasted Opinions Christmas episode. Part of what I like about Christmas is that it comes at the end of the year. That makes it a perfect time to reflect on everything that has happened in the current year and make plans for improving in the new year. I've published over 50 episodes this year. I've watched the occasional video get quite a few views and a decent amount of engagement. But for the most part, I've seen my view count taper down and my subscriber growth level off. I think that my older episodes were a bit too long, judging on the average view duration, so I cut down the length and sped up the content. I may not be able to completely counteract all of the changes which YouTube is making to their algorithms, but I can at least try to keep episodes shorter, higher energy, and more to the point. As a Christmas gift to you, I'd like to announce that I will be attempting a two-per-week publishing schedule again next year. That requires that I get busy creating and stay busy creating. There's only so much that I can do in advance on videos which address current events, like Brexit or impeachment or the latest changes on social media sites. Videos will be scheduled for Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and Sundays at 8 a.m., and I will do my best to stay to that schedule. I cannot express how grateful I am that you keep tuning in to watch this channel. Making content isn't easy, even with the format I follow, and every view, like, comment, and subscription is deeply appreciated. My goals for this next year are simple. I want to keep improving my content and publish it on schedule. I want to grow after each and every video so that I can pick up at least 100 new subscribers this year. I want to see people tuning in week after week to watch another batch of Roasted Opinions. And I want to see this channel stand on its own merits as one worth watching. So all I want for Christmas is for you folks to like, comment, and share each and every video with people who don't know about this channel yet. Thank you for 2019. May your 2020 be filled with joy and success. Oh, you're still here. Cool. Time for a Christmas story. Two potatoes. Going to my grandparents' house was always the best part of Christmas for me. My grandfather was a repair shop foreman at a factory, so he was pretty busy during the last two weeks of every December, repairing and recalibrating machines during the end of year shutdown. While everyone else in the family was gathering together and relaxing, grandfather was pushing him and his crews hard to get the factory ready for next year. I always kind of resented that, but since their house was just down the road from ours, my brother, my sisters, and most of our cousins came down to hang out with each other at our grandparents. Things weren't like they are now, back then. There was no cable television yet, and no internet. Christmas break was when we played outside in the snow, bundled up against the wind, building snow forts and hurling snowballs at each other until we finally came back inside, ruddy cheeked from the cold and breathless from laughing. Grandmother always had mugs of hot chocolate or spiced apple cider for us and a huge plate of fresh Christmas cookies, many times because she was teaching anyone who was interested how to bake them. On Christmas Day, we gathered together early at their house. Grandfather didn't work on Christmas, but grandmother certainly did. She gathered together her daughters and daughters-in-law in her kitchen and they started cooking, tormenting us with delicious smells while we waited and waited and waited for Christmas dinner. When everything was cooked, they covered the service board with more food than we could possibly eat. Grandfather thanked God that we had plenty, blessed those who had cooked all morning, and then we all said amen and lined up at the service board to load up our plates. There was always one bowl which we weren't allowed to touch, though. In it were two large potatoes, carefully peeled and boiled whole. I remember once when someone's new husband actually took one of the potatoes. Everyone just stopped and stared at him. Quickly, his wife whispered in his ear, and he put the potato back. After dinner, 
Grandfather got bundled up and took the potatoes, which Grandmother placed in a paper bag, out with him. He was gone for a few hours, and then he came back empty-handed. I didn't understand it. I didn't have to understand it. There was always two potatoes in a bowl on the service board, and they weren't for eating. But all of us grandchildren were curious about that, and about where Grandfather went and what he did with those potatoes. One Christmas, all of us grandchildren decided that we were going to find out. So we asked Grandfather on Christmas Eve to explain. All right, kids, I'll explain it tomorrow. You'll have to come with me because I can't just tell you. I have to show you. We were excited. Finally, we would know why there were two boiled potatoes which no one could eat and what happened to them and why it took so long for Grandfather to come back from wherever he went while we laughed and played games and sang Christmas carols. I could hardly eat dinner that year. Everyone else was stuffing themselves, but it didn't seem as important to eat as it did to finally learn Grandfather's secret. When dinner was over, Grandfather stood and started putting on his overcoat. All of his grandchildren also stood and started to put on our winter coats and scarves and hats and mittens. Grandmother put the potatoes into the paper sack, and when we were all ready, Grandfather led us out into the night. A Christmas snow was falling that year, just a few inches, but enough that there was a new coverlet of white over everything. There wasn't a wind, so the air was impressive in its stillness as the flakes drifted down. We walked, and eventually he started to talk. When he and Grandmother first married, it was the Great Depression. Jobs were hard to come by, and so was money. The only room that they could afford was in a tenement over a mile from where he worked, and they didn't have much. Just in time for their first Christmas, the mill where my grandfather worked burned down. No one was hurt, thank goodness, but a lot of people were out of a job and facing a very lean Christmas. By the time Christmas Day came, many in town didn't have anything to eat. Grandfather and grandmother were among them. So Grandfather walked to the grocery store with a pocket watch that his father had given him, hoping that the grocer would accept it in trade for some food. When he got there, though, there was a line of people who were waiting to go in. The grocer had opened his shop early and was giving away large potatoes to anyone who asked. Grandfather waited his turn and offered to give the grocer his watch when he reached the front of the line. But the grocer smiled and handed him two large potatoes and wished him a Merry Christmas instead. Grandfather walked home, a potato in each pocket, thinking about how kind it was that the grocer gave away such large potatoes when money was tight and times were tough. On his way home, he passed by the bank. The owner of the mill was coming out of the bank, smiling a wide smile, even though it was obvious that he had been crying. Grandfather asked him if he was alright, and the mill owner explained that the banker had offered to loan him enough money to rebuild the mill. He could even hire the mill workers to help rebuild it. Grandfather hugged him, overjoyed. Many people in town worked at the mill, and this was news which would brighten many spirits. He asked why the banker had agreed to loan him the money. While the mill had made money, the mill owner had borrowed enough to keep the mill going during the downturns of the Depression without having to lay off a single worker, and he was far in debt. The mill owner said that the banker had seen the grocer giving away potatoes, and decided that if a poor grocer could help the people in town, that he certainly could help too. While he told us the story, we walked through the town to a cemetery. There he stopped at two graves, first the grocer's grave, and then the banker's. He spoke to each of them, thanking them for their generosity, and leaving a potato on each man's grave. Then he led us back to town, to where the tenement was where he and grandmother had lived that year. There was a soup kitchen there, and we followed him inside. That's why he was gone so long. He was keeping their generosity alive by volunteering there on Christmas and we all joined in to help him when we saw what he was doing. It's been many years, and we've all grown up, and our grandparents are now long gone. But every year, each of us puts a bowl with two large potatoes, carefully peeled and boiled, on the table. And we all volunteer during the Christmas season to keep generosity alive. Merry Christmas, everyone.